take those irises off. I'm ready to assemble this and do a dry run with all of the components together. There is never an exception for me. Um, always a dry run, no question. Here I'm just breaking the irises with just with taking the corners off. I've already done those. So now it's time to put this together and see how we fare with it. That's my bottom. And this is where we have all these critical shoulders. These are tight. There's no joint gap there. There's no gaps here. No gap here. A little bit there. Not much, though. So I'm just going to go here first. Snug that down. Snug this down. And that, just that little movement, that little maneuver there took care of the, this. It was just a, not even a paper thickness of a gap there. So this is my second door done. So now I have my matched pair. Probably this is not the way they're going to go yet, but that's going to have, that's basically how they will look when they're in place like that. So... Um, I now have to fit the panels and create the panels, so I'll walk you through that. This is finished nicely here. This is really ready for gluing up, so. But I've got to fit my panels. So while I've got this together, I have no gaps. I can now get my exact sizing, make myself a note, cross-reference everything. The, the heights will probably be exactly the same. So this is 30 and 5 eighths, add half an inch, that's 31 and 1 eighth. And then I'm going to check again. 30 and 5 eighths, check this one. I know these are the same, but there's no home checking. So those are the same. So I need four at that, and then mm -hmm. I need my width. And I'm going to add a half inch to whatever I've got here. So I've got four and a half here. I've got four and a half here. So that's going to be five inches. So five inches. Now my panels are going to be a half inch thick or thereabouts. I might do them slightly under. But I'm going to have my panels. Um, the outside will be level with this face here. The inside is going to have a step. So it's going to be nearer to flush on the inside, not necessarily dead flush. So I'm going to put a step in my panel. So I've got the overall height of my panel, the overall width, and now I'm going to cut four of them. So I'll get the panels and we'll show you how we do that. I've got my um, panel um, cut. I've got two more to do yet. I've got them ripped down to make panels, but 
Um, I've plane, surface planed these by hand. I use the scrub plane to take off the rough saw marks. Um, but I, we have some options here now. Here's a flat panel, and this is the panel that I'm planning on putting in my cabinet door here. So I'm going with a flat panel, perfectly flat. Um, you have options. You could rebate it. You could do this. You could do this. I don't really remember these two projects. These are the ones we did way back when we first started woodworking master classes. We did a, a wall clock like this. It's one of the first ones. So if you want to see how these are done, you can do that. You've got a raised panel here with a simple bevel on the outer rim. You've got a flat panel. But our panel is about half an inch thick. This one's half an inch thick, and we're going to fit that into a quarter inch rebate. So we either have to put, if I want a flat panel on the, flump, on the front, which I do, I either have to put a chamfer on here down to just under quarter of an inch all the way around the edge, or I could rebate this, um, or I could plane it all the way down to thickness, which I don't want to do. That's a lot of planing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer fit this. Um, there are some issues with this. If Sometimes the board can be bowed along its length and you have to remember that if it is bowed it may have enough strength in that bow to affect the style of your project and in, in th these cases you really want to test it first. This is how I would test mine. You take the bowed piece if it is bowed, offer it to the style now, you can see I'm flat here, so I don't have that issue. But what you would do is offer it to the style, put a clamp here, put a clamp here if it's, bowed, if it's got a, a bow along its length this way, or you could flip it around and put one clamp in the middle. Then you sight along the style to see if this is affecting the style enough. If it's not, because it's actually going to be less than the strength it actually has because it's got to go in another groove on the other side which also takes some of the pressure out so if you are worried about it just clamp a piece on there if it has sometimes when you cut them they're perfectly flat the next day you come in to fit your panel and they've already bowed or cupped or done something they do that's wood it does strange things you can't just throw wood away once it's within the frame usually it will be constrained and it will never affect anything again that's the gospel according to Paul Sellers. I, it doesn't always work that way, but it can. Getting this apart isn't always easy. Where is my piece of wood? When these are close together, you don't really have anything to bang on here. So... Little ingenuity certainly don't damage the crisp corners you've got on the styles there. You've got them marked, you've marked the tenons inside or you have done something. I have all mine marked so I'm not really worried. And of course the grooves are all going to be exactly the same. There shouldn't be any discrepancy between them. So you can start fitting your panel to one groove. So here's my first panel. I've got to get the width. I know the width has to go quarter of an inch past this one and right in between that wall there. So I have some to take off. I've got about, I've obviously cut over size. Check this and check both ends. I cut this an eighth over size, so I'm going to go check this end. Check your length. You can't really do your top or bottom yet until you've checked your length. I'm going with a scrub plane first just to see. 
you shift these clocks. <coughs> Can't really do anything until you've got everything sized to fit. That scrub plane, boy does it remove material fast, I love it, it really works perfectly well. If you haven't got one, you should get one, make one. Adapter blade. That's that. I don't have to do any more than that, as long as it's straight, which it is. And I'm down to my line exactly. One of the things I did is I matched my panels, as you may or may not be able to see here. I, I chose my grain. I've cho chosen my configuration. This, these two pieces came out of the same board. The light may be catching this differently for you, but face on without the light reflecting, these two panels work very well. I've made a triangle on here like this. This tells me that's the top of the panel. This tells me this is the right, this is the left. And that I've placed, I've made these to go in the doors this way. And you have to make sure that these panels are similar to the adjacent door. It doesn't always work. You can't always get it exactly how you want it. But that's the way I did mine. So I'm going to set a marking gauge to the quarter inch chisel because the quarter inch chisel it was exactly sized to the groove here. So I'm going to shoot for that quarter of an inch first. I've chosen the outside face of my piece of wood. So I know I'm in the right zone there. So the stock of the square goes against this face here. So now I can run a gauge line all the way around and work to that gauge line Whichever method I choose, whether I want the, the um, raised panel method or the rebated one, I'm certainly not going to play that much off this board, that's for sure. With age comes wisdom. So that will correspond, I think, with this here. Can you see that? So that's the size I'm shooting for. I've got to check my length. I didn't check the length, did I? So the length is going to be between these two shoulders plus half an inch. And you can make it a hair under if you want to. So I do have to cut one of these down. I should have checked this first. So this is a good lesson. This is me telling you not to do what I do. Can you see I'm a little bit out of square? So I'm going to correct that. Should have checked this, shouldn't I? A little bit less. A little bit less still. Don't go all the way through, this will break off. I'm just there, just touching that other side. And I'm square, that's definitely close enough. So this length plus a half inch. And I am good to go. So I'm going to measure here, add the half inch. Like I said, you could go a, a millimetre under and that would be perfectly acceptable. Actually, I am there. I am cut to length. I may just take a shaving off. Yep. Because that's... Uh, so I'm just a wee bit out of square. This came straight off the saw, so... bit more. Flip around and one shaving off this corner to meet the other line here. 
just like that. That's it. I'm not going to do any more than that. See what we got. We're square. We're right on the line. We're right on the money. If I just have to run those gauge lines again. A little bit, I think. Small thing, small thing. We're going to uh, rebate the panel, but we not instead of using a rebate plane, we could use rebate plane like this or a, another type of rebate plane, rabbit plane, rebate plane. But what we're going to do is we're going to use a plow plane, and I'm going to show you a trick that I came up with that works really well. If I put the plow plane on here, the sole is barely on this width of a board, and if this was actually if the fence was further away from the cutting edge it would be way over this edge and I couldn't use this plane but I came up with a trick a few years ago that really works well I just put a dab of super glue in this case I'll put three points you don't need very much super glue to have this hold and then a little bit so I'm going to actually take out the back edge of this here this is my front face this is how it's going to go in my panel down there in my frame down there so what I do is I just take a dab of the super glue and here I'm putting some accelerator on here just like this Th that will meet those points bring this over and just flush it with the edge of the panel give it two seconds to grab and I actually can still put this into the vise with the board in my vise but you may not be able to do that your vise may not be big enough can you see it just goes in the edge I've got this super glued onto here that means that th this is what would affect it the sole would be affected yes but then this wouldn't have had anything to register against as I went down into the cut so here I've got this so this does register so it will guarantee my depth and the sole is guaranteeing that I don't uh, dig too deeply because the sole is what governs the thickness of the shavings. So that, there you go, that's working very nicely. I'm getting down here. So that pine piece is just a sacrificial piece. And I'm going down three eighths of an inch. Need a little grease on there. better not to take too big of a bite you can take a thicker shaving that's down to depth there and there and that's it let's take a look here you can see we've got a very nice crisp corner here this one pop it off like that there's the glue it will be on both pieces just slightly when we're done we'll just take a scraper and that will or a chisel and that will just whip straight off that surface but look at the, the nice crisp clean line we've got for the groove I don't know if this fits yet but I can take some off this face now look at that, it's perfect so a little bit of a shaving because I want it a little bit easier than that so we'll do the other edge and then I'll show you how we work the end grain because that's going to be 
a little bit different. So this now, I'm going to use the opposite face here. I'm going to clean these glue tabs off after, and then I can use this corner and I can use this corner. So I've got all four corners on one piece of wood. One thing I love about the super glue in this case, super glue is surprisingly strong. It's, uh, it, it really is um, surprisingly effective for some glue ups. But there are flaws to it as well. This works perfectly for this, doesn't it? So the accelerator has created this. It's all ready to go. It's already solid enough to work with. All right, I'm going a little more gently with the locking in the vise this time. is any harder it would be hard to say there's all my shavings using a router I mean yes you can set a router up in a router table but this works so amazingly well that I don't know about the time difference after setup and everything you know it's really most of it it's not an either or with machines versus hand tools. It's whether you like the dust and all the other things really. my next one done bit harder that one so there Amazing really, it's not really glued to that surface. Look how easily that comes off. And I would just go in with a scraper, card scraper, not, or a uh, cabinet scraper, probably a cabinet scraper. would do this the greatest justice. So just to take that residue out of the surface, so I don't forget when I come to putting the application of finish on there. That's that, nice. So there we've got our two grooves that's close, very close. So I want to do the cross grain here now. And I was asking before, what do we do for that? There are two ways you can do this. You can set the gauge like this. This is a cutting gauge. And we can go across the grain like this. Create a knife wall, basically. Which, that's what's in here. There's a knife wall. Or, which I might do, make the mark and then reaffirm it with a bona fide knife wall here. See, yeah, I already squared the end up here, so this knife wall works perfectly on this. This just gets it a lot deeper. So we can do that as well. 
See how I squared the ends up? You, so, you know, when we plane the ends and we get them square, then we can use that end, whether we use a gauge or we use the knife with the square. We've got the depth to cut to. So what we'll do is chisel into the wall. I want this one. Like that. This knife wall has radically changed woodworking for a lot of people and I'm so glad it has because this it's actually eliminated things like shoulder planes. You really don't need a shoulder plane because of the knife wall. Look here now. <coughs> but there's nothing to stop you cleaning it up with a knife with a shoulder plane. Try not to score into these two outside faces. They're not really seen, but let's see if I can do this. <coughs> Take out the bulk, check the grain direction, see what you feel, and then you can see if you want to go just shy of the gauge line just to leave a little bit of wood on there so you can plane it smooth using the router plane usually you can see I'm not quite deep enough with my saw curve I think you can if I just go back into this inside corner here just to make sure I am deep enough I'm going to go with another pass there and that's looking crisp and clean, but the face is not. I'm going to set this to the depth of this one here. Yeah, and then just clean up that face from this face. That guarantees a meeting on that corner. So when I come to put my tonged piece into there, see it's fitting, but it's too tight. You can, if I was to force this, I could split this here. Two things you could do. This now aligns with this face and this face. So I need to check this along the groove. And what we can do, we can either reset this, get this um, plane, or we can take a shaving off this face, just with a slight leading edge. And how we do that is we make sure the plane is set very shallow. And we go across here, watch here. I lift up here on this back end of the plane, this heel of the plane here. I lift up slightly, watch, and go across the grain with two or three, four passes. That won't be discernible when I come to, see that? It fits perfectly now, just with those two or three, four passes. And uh, I've got that nice crisp inside corner right in here. I've got a crisp inside corner. That will be about where it lines up when I come to put this together. I've got the rebate, that I, the reveal on the inside, so when this actually comes together like this. I've got a one eighth reveal around here. That's not fully home yet. Now then, what do I do if this is not going on here? All our grooves are pretty much guaranteed this, uh, the groove for this to fit, but we, we may need to take a shaving off here. So how do we do that? It's back to the clamp in the vice deal here. Still have to cut that one yet, don't I? Let's go ahead and slide this in and we'll see what we can do. I'm going to overhang here on this outside. 
so nothing gets in the way. And then I'm going to use the poor man's rebate plan, which I'm hoping you've made. And if you haven't and you wanted to, you could use just a regular bullnose plane, which I might use as well, just to show you. In this case, you really don't need this fence on. So you could, you can just go with or without the fence. But this is what I mean now. I, I want to make sure everything is secure. And I'm just going to take a shaving here, off the face of this here, just to even up that surface until this starts to fit. So it does fit down at that end. I'm a little bit fat here. So you can lift off before you get to that end. See, this is starting to go on a bit more. And now we're so close that actually the vice is holding it off there. So there I've got that fitted. I work along it. I've got the vice this side, so I can't quite get to there. This is close. See there, perfect fit. And that's what we're really looking for. So I'll do the same on the other side and then I'll cut the opposite end and then I'll be ready to install this and make the other panel get them ready. So here we go. There, nice tight fit. So when we actually come to fit it into the groove in the final frame, it will look very nice. It looks very nice and tight. Once you've got your components cut, you want to do a dry run, of course. One thing I didn't show you on these, it's a good idea along these inside corners just to take the arris off like this. This will ease it into the groove and also the more it's more likely to have a little bit of buildup in the corner from ploughing the groove, so it's a good idea to do it anyway. Like that. Same on the ends here. Whoops. On the ends. Oh, there's one thing I want to show you. On these internal corners, these can be hard to get to with any kind of plane because it's too steep, of, uh, too shallow of an angle. And this is where a bullnose plane will work. Or you can take the sole off this one and use that one. It will work just fine. And just run this along this edge just to put a small chamfer on the edge. And it, it just makes it more pleasant you're going to be dusting the inside of your cabinet periodically. It just takes off the hard corner. And if you don't have one, the answer is just to take a block of wood, something like this, and run this along the edge, and that will do exactly the same job. So don't feel like you have to run out and buy a special plane unless you need an excuse to okay we're going to do a dry run I still have all my component parts named on here but as I go now I'm going to address this issue because just in case I'm going to be planing these off so I'm going to go with numbering these the way I do it is I number inside the rim of the mortise hole I get everything ready. I know which way it's going right now, but once I scrape these parts off, then it becomes reversible. I don't want that. So I'm going to go with something of a marking system. So this will be X. So I mark on a certain face on the mortise hole, a certain face on the tenon, always on the side that I have the face mark 
I do this the same every time. I might change the symbols though. This one, there's the top. So I've already got this one marked for the triangle on here. That will give me exactly, that has to be going, that can only go into this one anyway. So these will tell me that that's the top face. These, I had the triangle on here. So this is my top right. So I've marked this TR. And of course the other one is TL for T top left. So those are marked. So if I scrape these off, so I'm going to put the do the dry run while I have all the marks on and then I can scrape sand and get this project together. Ready for gluing up. Just making sure they're seated will keep everything square for when you offer your panels into this. So my panel is going to go in here, so it has to go in before I put the styles on. This is your harmony, this is your joinery coming together. second you're going to see whoops you're going to see the real value in in leaving the haunches on especially when you have uh, tight joinery and tight panels you start seeing how important this becomes because you've got to get it apart and it's hard to, to do So sometimes the panel can be a little bit oversized. You know, you may not have taken enough off. You may have taken a shoulder, uh, a shaving off this inside edge that can alter your glue lines. So make sure that they close up without a whole lot of pressure. I have a slight gap on this top corner, a slight one on the bottom. Can you see this? I want to show you because this means that I have assembled this slightly out of square. So can you see a gap here and a gap there and the same at the top? So what I would do in the situation before I clamp it, I would tap this here, a little bit more, and see that, that, that line is now closed. This one is parallel, I think. Yeah, this one is parallel. So now I know it's already square. I could check it at this point. Let me do that and see where, how close we are. 32 and 3 sixteenths in Imperial. 32 and 3 sixteenths. I can't better that. So just go ahead and get your clamps set. I mean, just to seat the joints and then take the clamp off. That one's seated nicely. And then this one, again, Listen, that's the tightness of the joints, all the parts together. 
But now when I take this off, I'm looking for spring back. If there's any spring back in this joint, it means that something is compressed inside. In this case, there is none. Then this top one, I have a very, very thin hairline gap there, and I have a bigger gap here. That can simply be a little bit of extra space here. One tap, one tap. Take a look at your joint. The joint closed off. This one's closed off. You can bring your clamp in if you want to, just to make sure, but I don't really feel in any way trouble because if you can tap it together and it doesn't spring back apart, you don't have an issue. Generally, anyway. There we go. So this would be ready for gluing up had I cleaned up the surfaces and sanded it, and that's what I'm going to do next. Let me show you what I was talking about when I said about the haunches. This is a wonderful reason for leaving haunches on until after you've glued up. You can take your hammer and you can tap your haunches apart here without damaging anything. And I think that's just about as important as anything I can think of. Because otherwise you have to start using blocks of wood. Sometimes you don't have a choice. But just keep working this until you've got that first one apart and then you can... Uh, there you go. So we'll get back together in a minute and we'll glue up. Here we go, point of no return, gluing up. Let's get the components in the right order. Make sure we have some idea of how we're assembling. Top right, that's there. Top left, there's my top rail. And there is my bottom rail. Okay, I've got everything ready to go. So we're gonna start the glue. We've done the dry run, we've made sure everything fits. We've made sure all the jo joint lines are as near perfect as we can get them. So we can start with the gluing up. I'm going to go right in the face of the mortise hole there. Don't put too much glue in the hole as I just did. And that's why I only put it on one side because if you put too much in, you can cause an airlock in the bottom of the mortise and prevent it from seating. Whatever too much is, I don't know. Whatever stops it from seating. I've got lines on here, if you remember, I put a couple of, just in case there was a little tolerance there, I put a couple of <laughs> lines on to help me line up the, um, this part with the, with the lines on the wood, so I, I'm good. See, I'm not square there, good idea right now to resolve that. Just because it, it's going to hold off a little bit more. And that can be drying while we're doing the rest of it. So let's go ahead and get the problem out of the way straight away. just to lubricate the hole a little bit. Check your joint line, it's looking good. Make sure you've got, this is my front face, so these are the panels that are going in here. This is my next one, top left, marked, ready to go. Yeah, a lot of times people ask me, do you glue the panel? And the answer is always no, you don't glue the panel because the idea is to allow that panel to expand and contract freely. And it's a good question to ask and it's better to ask it than not if you're not sure. 
So panels very rarely get glued along the edges anyway. All right. It's very uh, rhythmic, very orderly gluing up, hopefully. Sometimes it's not, sometimes something goes wrong. Try and anticipate things going wrong. Assume the worst and aim for the best. Get that together as fast as you can. Is it going? Yep, yeah, it's going. I'm not going to let this run. I'm going to lift this off because I can go along my joints after and probably will need to, even though they're flush. I don't want to build up that much glue on the outside. Good. Pretty good. A little bit out of square. That took care of that. Make sure you get these the right way. Because once this is together, it will be very hard to get apart because of the tightness of the joints. I have so enjoyed this project. I enjoy all of the projects, you know that, but this has been a neat project so far. One of my greatest loves is joinery, really. I remember making a cello with my son and I wanted to put joints in it because that's who I am, really, a joiner. But of course, they don't use any joints in those kinds of instruments because they have to take them apart in a hundred years' time Something goes wrong. Work fast and make sure everything is together as quickly as you can because these parts now are gluing. The, the glue is already grabbing and um, you don't have a lot of time. So I'm looking at the joint lines now just to make sure that they are fairly tight. I have a little bit of time to make some micro adjusting. If I'm out of square, if there's a joint line here that's not quite down, then I can make the adjustment now. This is the back that I'm facing here. So this is less of a problem. Tighten everything up. looking good. So the first one I'm going to put my clamp on is along this joint line here just temporarily very quickly and I, I want to make sure it seats the joints there. If, if you get a little bit of glue freeze and that joint just isn't going just wallop it with the hammer like this like this and you'll see that joint will give up straight away. I never had a joint yet that didn't give up on its hold. I think that looks pretty neat inside there. You could have done this on the outside. Can you see all the inside the reveal going around there? It's really nice. That could be your outside if you wanted it to be. 
So here now we have these more critical joint lines or as critical joint lines here. Do I have enough length? Too much. Good idea to set your clamps. See this joint here, right in that inside corner there. I've got a gap here, a gap on the other side. But this should, there you go. So I'm going to wallop it again with the hammer. To see that joint close up is what I really need to see. One more, and then I need to check for square just for my own peace of mind. Keep your, your, your um, clamps parallel to these rails because it makes a huge difference. There we go. I love seeing those joints close up. Tiny thin bead of glue coming out of that joint line. we have it. Now I can't check it for square with this big clamp on so I'm going to take that off. Check the joint line, make sure it doesn't move and it didn't so I don't need to put the clamp back particularly. I probably will. See that little bead of glue there? Perfect. That's exactly the right amount of glue. I'm going to leave that there till tomorrow and I'm just going to take a chisel and pe peel it off to it. And there again I got it here exactly what I want. Oh, that is so perfect. I've got 105, I mean, yeah, 115, 8115, 8115. I can't really get better than that. If it was out of square, you just have to strike it whichever if this was the longest corner, just hit here, boom, like that. No, I'll have to check it again. But just you, you just have to manipulate your clamps as well, and you can get that. I didn't move that, so. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. That is a glued-up, handmade door with no machines, and that's how you make big doors, small doors. It can be twice as wide. You have a household door. Twice as long, a household door. Twice as thick, you have an entryway door. It's the same procedure. If you want cross rails, it's the same as doing this rail. Very beautiful, very lovely, very simple. And we'll get back to cut the haunches off next and fit this. I'll show you how to fit a door. I'm ready to cut the haunches off my door now. Very simple. Line it up with the top edge of your door. Knife wall across. Knife wall across here. The knife wall may be on the underside when we end up cutting, which is exactly what I want, because I want these to, these uh, surfaces, I don't want any tear out on these surfaces. It's very, very, very important here. Same on the edges really, even though we still have to fit the door because the door is to dead size of the opening usually. Did that shift? Did. It's up to you which um, kind of saw you use for this. You could use a panel saw and you could use a tenon saw, um, whichever one you choose will be up to you. I'm going to use a tenon saw. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the saw here. Now I don't have much room, I've got a cabinet behind me. Follow my knife wall. Keep it lined up with the top of the door 
in this case. So I've got no tear out on the underside. There's a tear out in on the waste wood, which didn't really tear out even there. Steady when you get to here, you really want to make sure you don't put too much pressure on the saw. Just the weight of your hand, mostly on the forward cut is where the pressure is. Can you see this edge? It's perfect, it's pristine, it's got no torn fibers. We do the same on the bottom of the door. The only thing I have left to do to this top now is to plane it. This is exactly where I wanted it to be. I'm just going to take a shaving off just to even up any of the saw marks. There's my knife wall. I can see it perfectly. Set your plane nice and shallow. A little bit of tear out because I can't. Uh, I'm going against the rising grain of that swirly grain. There I am down to my knife wall. I'm going to back my iron off a little bit. Just to catch that end. And when you look in there, it's perfect. Can you see in there? So this now is ready for fitting. I'm going to cut the bottom off and then I'm going to show you how to fit a door and then how to hang a door. Mm -hmm.